still pursue us in terms of paying tax. So Canon 2121 then goes to explain that a bit more. Income tax is a rent tax. And this is important because I know people say many things about these uh, taxes and come up with different ideas, but I think it's important to be clear. It is clearly that income tax is a rent tax by the executives of this state for the use of their property in the form of the dead body corporate, also known as the corporation, of that Sesta KV trust we keep mentioning, or Fide Commissary Trust, formed on the presumption that the beneficiary is dead, abandoned, a minor incompetent. So what they're doing is they're taking our, uh, our rights, our benefits, they're wrapping them up at birth, they're putting them into a trust, they're then forming a commercial vehicle off the back of that, which is what the birth certificate is validating. And then they are saying that when we use that, our name and, and trade, that we're, we're using their property, which of course is an absolute perversion, but that's exactly what they're doing. Now, Canon 2122 adds an additional element to this because people cottoned on to this and they had to do more because people were recognising that the whole concept of income tax as a rent tax was a perversion because they are, in fact, uh, rightful heirs. So they had to add to it. They had to make it tougher. And this is what they did in Canon 2122. A further element used to enforce the payment of taxes is the false, secretive and misleading legislative treatment of the members of a society as aliens and enemies to the society. Therefore, all criminals since the 1930s in the United States and later for other nations. What they did with Trading with the Enemies Act and citizens and other pieces of legislation is they made all of us enemies of the state, aliens. They made their own citizens, their own members, their own people, aliens. Congress, senators. Unbelievable. So that only a handful of people were considered the rightful citizens or the rightful residents, and the rest of us are criminals. They made us all criminals. This is crucial for people to understand. This is the heart of how they come after us on tax. Crucial to understand. The force requirement to register for a tax number, this is still part of Canon 2122, the force requirement to register for a tax number is therefore the admission that one is to perform criminal acts for a given period and then a license is granted. The meaning of a license is effectively a permission to perform criminal acts. That is the definition, the legal definition of license ultimately in their system. A license is granted usually for one year on the provision of self-confession. So when they force you to gain a tax number, you have become a registered criminal. You might as well be on a, on a, on a, as a registered sex offender. It's the same thing. A registered taxpayer is a registered criminal in their system. You have admitted to it. Now, I know when people listen to this recording and you talk to people about these things, they, it's normal for people to say, how on earth could a government consider its entire population to be enemies? Well, that is the effective result of the laws that were passed, at least in America in the 30s and in, in most other places a little bit later. And they needed to because people were waking up and saying, no, I'm not going to pay income tax. They had to make it harder. And that's exactly what they did. So moving on, let's go to Canon 2123. Modern Roman tax collection systems treat each financial year as a separate testamentary trust. And therefore, each 
year equivalent to a separate court case, whereby a taxpayer is compelled to confess any crimes against their society in return each year, in the return each year, or face serious criminal charges. Now, this is important because I know that a number of you have heard of people achieving a win with the tax office or you yourself may have achieved a win with the tax office, only to find that come the next financial year, it is as if nothing had ever been accomplished. Now, how is that possible? Well, the tax office treats each year as if it is a separate court case, literally a separate court case. And providing you put in your self-confession you face normally a small civil suit, a small civil charge, and the matter is set off and balanced. But if you do not self-confess and they have to come after you, then the notices they send to you are equivalent to receiving a summons and charges. And this is why the tax office has the ability to rack up outrageous fines, fines in many cases that are greater to the original claim of income that they deem as taxable. Why? Because you are facing a court case that they never explain to you that that is exactly what it is. And because you have registered yourself as a taxpayer and effectively said, I am a criminal, then you have nowhere to move. You can throw as many promissory notes their way. You can try as many tricks as you, as you like. You might find that there are certain interim remedies and I have to thank Ron and I have to thank others who have done a lot of work in looking at these remedies, which can give you some respite, but is not a permanent remedy. It just means that for a few years, you might be able to use that as a way of uh, drawing a truce for certain financial years, certain court cases. Remember, every year is a new trust, every year is a new court case, you are being charged as a criminal every year. Now, again, I know people say this is outrageous. There's no way the tax officers around the world deal this way. Of course you deal this way. If you have dealt with a tax office, you know that they deal with you from the moment you put a foot wrong as if you are a guilty criminal. Of course you know that. The evidence is overwhelming. Overwhelming. So if you choose to register as a taxpayer, you are admitting that you will be committing crimes against their system over that coming year or years and giving them the right to come after you. So Canon 2125, we say, is whilst Roman society has forced their members to admit being taxpayers, there is no remedy in Roman law in remaining a registered taxpayer other than admitting to criminal acts under the perverted Roman laws in place with most nations. You want to argue how much they fine you? You want to argue whether you, you uh, are zero balanced out? You want to argue offsets? You want to do all those things? If you are registered, that is the central problem. Now, I want to say two, two things on taxes before we move to show you another important area. I'm going to talk about bonds in a moment. First is this. I believe, and this is my personal belief, and this is actually built into Eucadia, so it is a, a belief of Eucadia, and I hope all members of Eucadia share the same belief. It is my firm and absolute belief that if you are a member of any society, you have an obligation to help that society as you can. That's not an option. If you're part of a society, you can't then say, I opt out and choose to do nothing for the benefit of that society. In other words, if that society says, we need help in terms of you allowing us some of your energy for the benefit of the whole, my personal belief is that that is an absolute fundamental uh, principle of honour, duty and obligation. And I hope you all agree too in principle because I think that is key. You can't be a 
member of society and claiming protection of that society if you are not prepared to contribute and be part of that society. You can't have your cake and eat it too. But, and here's the but, that is not how the tax systems of the Roman law operate. The first thing they do when someone has an issue with the tax office is they say, this person doesn't want to contribute to society. There are, there are tax, uh, in Australia they call them tax bludgers. They're people that don't want to pay taxes. No, we want to contribute to our society. But I am not here to go through a system to contribute to my society under the guise of being a criminal where you have the right to treat me like a slave. Under the perversion that means there is a group of our society, an elite in our society, that contribute nothing. That is not a fair system. That is an unfair system. That's not a just system. That is an unjust system. That is not a system of contribution. That is a system of control, slavery, elitism, and an absolute abomination. And that is the tax system. So let no one say to you or ever allow anyone to get away with the claim that if you have an issue with tax, it's because you don't want to contribute. All of us, and I certainly do, and I'm sure all of you too, want to contribute to our societies. That is a fundamental principle and to their society. Even though Eucadia is its own society, we want to help contribute to the Roman society. But that is not what the present tax system does. So I hope from those insights we shared on tax tonight that uh, you can see that we get stronger with our understandings. And whilst I'm not talking about any kind of remedies or solutions coming from it at this point, I hope you see that these insights are extremely important when you're coming to terms with cases where the tax office is coming after you year after year, again after again. Well, let's move on because time is ticking away. I want to show you a lot of things tonight. The next one I want to show you is I want to show you bonds. And this may need a bit more work, but I want to show you a couple of things on bonds because bonds, as I'm sure a number of you are aware, when you've, or many would be aware, when you've gone into a court case, of course there are bonds. You've heard of bail bonds. Uh, we've spoken that there are bonds being issued in secret, and that's one of the key things that they're trying to do is make money off bonds. So let's talk about bonds. What is bonds and where it comes from? This is Article 102. This is Article 102 of Positive Law on one-heaven.org, one-heaven.org. So please click on Article 102 on Bond. If you've been here before, again, you might need to refresh the page. Okay. Well, I'm going to go straight to Canon 2072, which is the meaning of the word bond, the origin of the word bond. I'm going to read this out. The word bond originates from 1st millennium BCE Gaelic. That's where it comes from, Gaelic. They say it's Old English, but it's, it's Gaelic, and it's been around for thousands of years. And the word is bond, or bondy, if you want to put the E and, ex and express the E, bond. And it means the male head of household or a freeborn farmer. That's what it meant. It meant the head of the household or a freeborn farmer. And it comes from two words. The word bon, meaning base, sole of foot, foundation or source. And day or de, meaning as, the or on. So that's what bond and the original meaning of bond meant. It basically meant the head of the household or a freeborn farmer. But when they introduced, when the Roman cult introduced in the 13th century their concept of feudalism, they deliberately Latinized it to bondagitum, bondagitum, or what we know as the word bondage. And the word bondage doesn't mean a, a free farmer or a head of the household. It means to drive, to move, chase, agitate, excite to action, persecute, keep household animals or farm animals. 
Hence, the true and original